try now in this presentation um, to answer or to give some insights uh, as um, answers to the question that I chose as a title for this presentation that is, I have accelerators ever uh, done for us. Uh, of course, uh, for uh, time sake, I'll not go into details of the sustainable development goals. However, I hope that uh, also by the end of this uh, 20 minutes to um, share some insights and that you can uh, get some uh, clues on how we are trying and doing our best uh, also to uh, implement uh, uh, many of these uh, goals. The um, kind of particle accelerator that uh, I'm highlighting in, uh, in this presentation is the synchrotron light sources. And actually, synchrotron radiation uh, was observed in, as Crab Nebula uh, 6,000 light years ago, and also was observed in the labs uh, in 1947. Uh, this kind of radiation uh, is um, emitted uh, through the acceleration of uh, particles moving in a curved path to the speed close to the speed of light. And this opens actually a huge uh, range of opportunities uh, and uh, complementarities if we want to uh, couple uh, more than a uh, technique uh, to another. Uh, this uh, radiation has uh, unique properties uh, that uh, allow us to investigate virtually uh, all uh, sorts of uh, matter for almost uh, uh, all applications. Um, this uh, um, kind of radiation, as we extract it or we work uh, on it, produce it in a particle accelerator, is uh, covering a wide range of electromagnetic radiation that takes into account the X-rays, whether hard X-rays, soft X-rays, ultraviolet, visible light, as well as infrared uh, radiation. Uh, is considered one of the most influential tools uh, if we are focusing on different fields of scientific research. And this uh, also can be considered as a giant microscope that uh, uh, give us a lot of information, a lot of answers about the microscopic world, about the invisible uh, part uh, of our world. Uh, we're not discussing more about the basic or applied, but uh, of course, nothing get, can go on without focusing on fundamental and basic uh, sciences such as uh, physics, chemistry, biology. Uh, of course, this can be uh, still extended to uh, different um, fields uh, uh, in between, uh, such as um, biophysics, in, uh, life science, material science, uh, whatever, whatsoever. And this also, as I said, is um, um, extended to uh, so many applications such as um, energy, um, um, pharmaceuticals, uh, medicine, um, many of the uh, public health uh, uh, research is also uh, produced in the getting benefits out of these uh, kind of accelerators as well as for uh, agriculture, for environment, uh, energies, batteries, uh, whatever uh, you can think of. Uh, I believe that there is a space in our uh, world of particle accelerators to give an answer to. Not only giving answers about our uh, present or our, about our uh, future, but also we can go back to our past and uh, also in this kind of uh, accelerators, you can get some information about our history or about our um, ancient uh, uh, ancestors, like um, what you can see in this slide, we're doing a lot of experiments on cultural heritage, archeology, span bioarchaeology, and uh, paleontology as well. Of course, uh, uh, all these kind of particle accelerators, as well as other uh, infrastructures, have uh, science, uh, which is a common language, a neutral language that everybody understands. And this uh, also uh, moves uh, towards common goals uh, and uh, taking into account and considers common values. And hopefully, this also takes us to common uh, impact on our societies. 
Uh, and again, uh, it's very uh, needed, as uh, we just heard along this uh, session, that uh, we need to keep building up on the successful contributions in science, regardless of the cultures, regardless of any uh, national labels. Uh, and also, we need to learn from any failing experience. We need to learn from our mistakes and try to correct them along the way. And uh, nothing is uh, nicer than this image that I got that uh, uh, we do not ask about any label for uh, um, any of um, our um, scientists. Uh, we don't care about their religion, their nationality. We don't care about their political point of views. We care only about what we can achieve together as uh, scientists. And again, sustainability development, education, history, and young people are uh, quite together in one loop. As I said, uh, we are having uh, these um, common purposes and uh, common values together. And uh, as we share 99.9% .9 with each other as humans, that means we share also uh, the uh, same disease, uh, pollution, energy, global warming, and uh, COVID is not that far. Uh, to uh, teach us a lesson of how uh, science and collaborations can help uh, um, fighting uh, such a pandemic that uh, um, attacked all uh, the globe, not only um, a particular region of the world. Uh, of course, uh, this also gets, gets its uh, impact on our economy, food security, and also disaster management. This goes typically beyond the individual capacity or budget of many uh, uh, countries. And uh, I also impose uh, this question, uh, what if what we need is also more than uh, money? This is a region that I take you closer, which is the Middle East region where we are now. And uh, many um, opinions are uh, tackling the uh, international rights and social justice in this region. As you see that this region is always tainted with uh, wars and political conflicts, uh, whether for religious uh, aspects or for uh, political aspects as well. So uh, the key that was uh, used to go through these uh, conflicts uh, was to use science as a neutral tool to bring these people together. And this is why we say that Sesame was uh, built as a model of science diplomacy in the region. Uh, Sesame is the first third generation light source in the Middle East and neighboring region. It stands for synchrotron light for experimental science and applications in the Middle East, and is considered a symbol of cooperation, solidarity, and peace. If you uh, just give it a quick look, uh, Sesame started uh, back in 1995 as uh, a meeting to try to bring the people of the region together, the politicians, diplomats, and science diplomats. And uh, that took almost 20 years to bring it eventually uh, on Earth uh, as a functional and operational particle accelerator of the region. Uh, we started as uh, a donated uh, machine and some equipment for beam lines and instrumentation as Bessie one that was dismantled from Germany. And uh, what you see in this picture is Sesame in 2002 as these components uh, left uh, the harbor in uh, Germany, going to its homeland finally in Jordan. Uh, and uh, this picture I see to the right is uh, Sesame existing now in 2023. Of course, uh, we are still using parts of this uh, donated equipment, uh, but uh, Sesame went to an extensive upgrade and we are running a totally new uh, storage ring, which is the third accelerator of the facility. Uh, Sesame uh, is an intergovernmental organization and uh, it's at the service of its members and also the whole world because we are serving science. And it was modeled uh, on CERN and it was established under the uh, umbrella of the UNESCO. Sesame members are currently uh, those eight you see now on this map. 
uh, those are without alphabetical order, uh, Pakistan, Iran, uh, Turkey, Jordan, Palestine, Cyprus, uh, Egypt, and Israel. And it's not that difficult to, to understand why Sesame is uh, a brilliant and unique example of science diplomacy in the region, bringing all these people together on one table in one facility to work only uh, for science, leaving all their political conflicts aside. And again, uh, uh, we always ask uh, this question, uh, could that our uh, past and also our present shape uh, a new future for the region or not? Uh, this is something we are in the process of, uh, but from the first uh, insights, we believe that is going to work. Uh, Sesame also has extensive international support and it has its observers. Uh, those are uh, listed here in this slide. Almost all the uh, European uh, facilities, uh, also other um, uh, organizations such as CERN, uh, UNESCO, the European Union, and so on. So to answer uh, quickly in some bullets what have accelerators ever done for us so we can say that uh, they help establishing world-class basic and applied research interdisciplinary of course and multidisciplinary uh, these can also provide um, a healthy environment for collaborations and individual development uh, training graduate students uh, those no longer need to go abroad looking for opportunities uh, another uh, crucial point for our region is that uh, we are trying to attract um, uh, scientists working uh, abroad uh, to return with this, uh, trying to uh, reverse the brain drain and also the internal brain drain. I think this is also something that is uh, that can be, uh, I would say, extended to other uh, facilities all over the world, not only in our region. Uh, one major uh, importance of such facilities also is to address uh, local or regional concerns, whether biomedical, environmental, whatever, and also to promote capacity building with different aspects such as scientific, uh, economic, or also uh, human uh, capacity building. Uh, with that, it also uh, develop economy and high-tech industry. And as we just heard, we are also uh, targeting to decrease the gender gap as much as possible. But of course, because there are many barriers and obstacles that we are trying to um, overcome in, in this region. Um, in other words, uh, this is one of my favorite um, phrases about uh, particle accelerators that they are operating in a democratic mode. And that means we are using scientific cooperation to promote uh, peace and understanding between people from different traditions, religions, and also political uh, systems. To take you closer, uh, when I said, well, if what we need is more than money, of course, we have a lot of financial challenges and shortage uh, to get uh, the facility going on. But what if you need more than that? What if you need peace? Uh, we believe that uh, uh, Sesame is uh, uh, just in the right uh, place to uh, bring us uh, forward to a peaceful state uh, of existence and uh, cooperation. And this, of course, will have its impact on uh, all the societies in the region. Another uh, thing that was also uh, uh, noted and uh, many efforts are going in this direction also is to, uh, as I said, decrease the gender gap, uh, taking also the women rights to uh, compete for a scientific career as a human right that needs all the respect, all support and encouraging. The other third major point for us, again, is the brain drain reversal. And what you see in this map, uh, it confirms how the uh, low and middle income countries, uh, mostly existing in our region, are severely affected by the uh, brain drain, where all the large scale immigration with technical skills and knowledge escape uh, from the region to a better opportunity. 
This is a map that I believe was seen by politicians, policymakers, and diplomats. And this is the one I believe we scientists are uh, targeting and we are um, trying to uh, implement it also in our um, um, in our life as not, not only as scientists, but also as human beings. And this is two maps that considers different kind of collaborations between uh, scientists from different nationalities and backgrounds. But again, we need to understand that science diplomacy works better with the challenging relationship, relationships, but also it does not work without the real scientific exchange. This is an image to show you what we call science diplomacy in Sesame, that different countries are all collaborating regardless of any conflict to build what, just one cell of the accelerator. In 2017, Sesame was finally officially inaugurated. And in 2018, we became the first associate of the League of European Accelerator-based photon sources. And in 2019, Sesame became the first and to our knowledge, the only uh, particle accelerator complex that is fully powered by renewable energy with a generous um, support from the European Union. Uh, Sesame storage ring uh, is 2.5 giga electron volt, and uh, we are uh, aiming for uh, 400 milliamps. So far, we are working with 300 milliamps. And uh, we have the capacity to 24 uh, beam lines serving different techniques for different applications. But we are starting with what we call it phase one beam lines. Those are uh, these um, eight uh, phase one beam lines. We have so far three operational beam lines and two are coming uh, um, uh, soon in this, uh, actually by the end of this year, we'll have uh, five operational uh, beam lines. Um, the progress of our uh, success is measured actually by the number of the proposals those we received for the three operational beam lines so far. It's tremendous success for our region. And uh, we believe that uh, with the addition of the next two beam lines by the end of this year, we will also uh, have um, a stronger uh, position um, as a uh, synchrotron facility. Uh, a sixth uh, branch uh, for uh, the fifth uh, beam line is also uh, another um, sign of success because it's funded uh, by one of the Sesame members for the first time. So we are building a strong community, not only for us as staff, but we are also uh, targeting uh, the uh, scientific community of the Middle East and uh, from uh, all over the world. And what you see in this uh, uh, pie chart uh, is just uh, uh, some examples of our uh, users, uh, those come to perform their scientific research at Sesame. They are not only from uh, Sesame members, but they are also from uh, other uh, countries as well, like from United Arab Emirates, um, Qatar, um, Oman, Netherlands, Morocco, Malta, Malaysia. Those are not uh, uh, Sesame uh, members. And this also uh, takes us to another level of uh, uh, transferring uh, the know-how and the experience that we got through also training uh, through collaborations, through training opportunities and networking that also proves to establish a tangible implementation of the sustainable development goals. So the next mile for, uh, for us and for the particle accelerator community also is to uh, establish an African light source. Uh, and uh, it's quite known that uh, there is over 60 uh, synchrotron light source all over the world, but none in Africa. And uh, we are all uh, hand by hand uh, working extensively towards uh, fulfilling the dream of Africa by um, um, funding and founding a, uh, the, uh, the first um, African light source. Reasons are still the same. Uh, the particle accelerator in Africa will still do the same 
uh, job as for any other uh, particle accelerator and just mentioning a few examples on public health in Africa, such as malaria, HIV, different kinds of cancers, maternal mortality, but not only that, uh, there is also the very rich cultural heritage um, disciplines in Africa and also beyond such as uh, water pollution, agriculture, and uh, uh, environment. Uh, to end with this, uh, I'll just uh, mention that uh, what you see here, all these organizations, all these facilities, and not only particle accelerators, also other infrastructures and institutions are showing a huge uh, uh, support uh, for establishing the first uh, uh, particle accelerator in Africa. And Sesame was the first uh, particle accelerator also to uh, sign uh, an MOU with the FLS Foundation uh, uh, in 2021. Um, I end uh, with uh, one of my favorite quotes also for uh, Nelson Mandela. That is, after climbing a great hill, uh, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. And uh, um, Sesame was one of them. And uh, we hope that uh, the African lessors will be the next hill to, to climb. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jihan. Amazing presentation. Uh, let me uh, ask you a question, picking up on the um, uh, science diplomacy. Who are or who should be the main drivers in science diplomacy? Are we talking about scientists or, or, or who in particular should well, be? Well, actually, um, usually when we mention this, uh, we go mentioning both uh, scientists and the politicians and diplomats. Uh, so it's like uh, going both ways um, and because experience showed us that uh, one way is not enough. So they should work hand in hand. Yes, should be always hand in hand, yes.